let's apply to Rogue Community College. We'll start on the Oregon Goes to College website and from the College Info menu tab, choose Apply to College. That takes us to a page that has a lot of really great information about what we can do to prepare to apply, including some um, ideas of things that we may need to gather, information, materials, etc., that we might need to gather in order to complete the form, and some tips for how we can be successful when we sit down to complete that form. Now, I already know that I'm planning to apply to Rogue and I've gathered all of the information that I need. And so I scroll down to this table that has a list of all of the colleges in the state and I find the link for Rogue Community College. When I click on that, it's going to take me directly to the admissions page of the college's website. So this is the page where I need to be to find a button to say apply. I'm going to scroll down to find that button uh, and the first thing that they want to know is what kind of student am I um, and you'll choose the one that is right for you now I am graduating this spring and I plan to enroll at Rogue start taking classes there in the fall so in in the fall immediately after I graduate and so I'm going to go ahead and choose first time college um, it says 18 and older. However, if you are a high school graduate, this is the place for you. So even if you're 17 now, if you will be graduating from high school and starting, this is the one that you'll choose. And now we have the opportunity to get started. Um, a quick note that there's no fee to apply. Good to know. It gives me also some information about who I can contact if I start to have some trouble and have some questions about the application form itself. And then if I needed to know what information I should gather, I would um, click on the new student checklist to be able to do that here. It also lets me know that if I've already started this process, I could log in here, um, but I haven't started the process, so let's get started from the beginning. One other thing to note that uh, might be useful is that on the application form, if there is an asterisk next to or a star next to the question, that means it's required. I can't move on without answering this question. Some questions won't have that asterisk. I don't have to answer those questions, but sometimes there might be a very good reason to answer the question. And so we'll just go through and make those decisions as we go. So first name, uh, what's important here is to make sure that this is your legal first name. That's the name that's on your birth certificate, on your driver's license if you have one, on your high school transcripts. So this is your legal first name. And I do have a middle initial and I'm going to share that here, although again, it's not required and then my last name. Previous last name, this means if I've ever had a last name other than the current one that I use now. Really common reasons for that. You got married, or you were adopted, um, or some other reason that you may have a new last name. Um, you'll want to provide your previous last name here. The reason for that is so that um, in case there's some documents that are coming into the college that have your old name on them, they'll be able to match them up um, so with this current application so that all of your materials get to be together in one place. I can choose my gender. I can choose to answer this question or I can decline to answer. SSN, that stands for Social Security Number. You'll notice this doesn't have an asterisk. It does, however, have some numbers. Those are um, for footnotes so that you can read about why you might want to provide your social security number even though you don't have to, and then some other information here. You'll want to read through that. Um, there's also some really good information about why you should provide your social security number if you have one. Here's my take on it. If you have a social security number and you apply, you plan to apply for federal financial aid, you are going to be required to provide your social security number. You can't apply for federal financial aid without it. Um, in order to easily match up this application with your federal financial aid application or your FAFSA, you providing your social security number now is a whole lot easier than having to come back and try and do it later. So if you have one and you know it, um, now is a really good time to provide it. If you don't have a social security number, that's okay. You don't have to have one in order to apply to Rogue. However, if you do have one and you plan to apply for federal financial aid, now is the time to provide that number. So go ahead and do that there. 
if you are going to make the choice not to submit your social security number or if you don't have one, you'll want to check this box just to make sure that they know you've read through all this information and um, know what you're doing. And then we move down and they're looking for our birth date. So you'll go ahead and select that. Um, scroll down to find the year and your email address. This is the email address that you are using for all of your college information, all of your financial aid information, all of your scholarships, and it's one that you are checking on a regular basis every couple of, every couple times a week. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and begin the process of applying. Okay. Now I need to make an account, and so I'm going to do that here and have a password. And I'm going to choose, or I'm going to retype that password to make sure that I got it the same. And I'm going to choose a hint for that uh, password just in case. You could choose any of these. I'm going to choose my favorite color and that is green. Um, you'll choose the question and the answer that works for you and create the account. Again, remember before I do that, there is this link to ask questions if I have questions as I'm going. I don't want to save this, I'm on a public computer. Might take a little bit of time, and that's okay. Um, brings up this next section. This section is about, um, oh, why am I interested in and some of my education? Um, but I do also want to point out on the left-hand side here, if I have questions, so again, there's a phone number, there's an email address, and then all of these different places where I can get information. But let's work on the application itself. I'm going to be starting, remember I'm graduating in the spring of 2021 and I will graduate in the fall of 2021. Uh, I chose Rogue because my high school counselor told me about it, so I'm gonna go ahead and click that. You'll want to look through this list and find the one that is right for you. If you choose other, you'll want to provide that there. So for example, if you have a friend um, who told you about it, you could enter that here. If you have earned any college credits while you are in high school, you'll choose yes for this question. For me, the answer is no, so I'm going to choose that. If you choose yes, then they want to know where you, where did you earn those credits, in high school or another college, and the Rogue is going to receive transcripts. That means that you're going to get the transcripts to Rogue Community College so that they can give you credit for them. Um, they want to know where they're looking for those transcripts from. You'll choose the state that the school is in. So you'll scroll down. For example, if you earned those while you were in high school in the state of Oregon, you'll choose Oregon and then type in the name of the high school or the college. Um, and you'll do that for as many different colleges um, or high schools where you earn that credit. Um, this is a list of different things that you may be interested in having additional help with. So there are services available. Um, through Rogue Community College to help you with any of these things. So you'll want to read through here and you can click as many of them as you like. So for example, I, I definitely think that I'm going to want to have a job while I am going to school and I might need some help finding work. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. If you have other things that you are um, looking for particular assistance in, you can go ahead and choose as many of those as you'd like. If there are campus activities that, um, that you're interested in, you'll want to go ahead and choose this. So for example, are you interested in getting involved in the arts, in giving campus tours, in theater, in sports, etc.? I'm interested in student clubs, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. You can choose as many or none of those if you like. And then um, this next one is, so outside of your academic classes, are there personal or professional classes um, that you're interested in. So are you interested in, for example, learning how to study better? So you might choose study skills. Um, or if you're interested in learning about different careers, you could choose career exploration. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one and proceed to the next step. Okay. 
Okay, we're on to personal and contact information. So this is information about uh, who we are and where we live, how they can get in touch with us. First question, this is required, see that asterisk, we're going to select our citizenship status. Uh, I am a US citizen, so I'm going to choose that. Resident alien, that is, if you are a permanent resident or you have a green card, you'll choose resident alien. If you are not a U.S. citizen and not a permanent resident, you'll choose non-U.S. citizen. Um, or you can choose not to answer this question. Um, so it is required for you to answer it, but you can choose in your required answer to not answer. But I'm going to go ahead and choose U.S. citizen, and you'll choose the one that's right for you. Uh, questions about race and ethnicity are not required, but I'm going to choose to answer them, and if you feel comfortable doing so, you could as well. So I'm going to choose, I can choose one or more in the racial categories, um, and then I'm going to choose Hispanic or Latino. Now they're looking for my phone number, so I'm going to provide that here. If I have a job where I have a phone number that I can be reached at, I could provide that number here. I don't have one, so I won't be filling this in. Mailing address, there are two lines. The first line typically is the number and street that you live on. The second line is a really great place to add your apartment number. Then you'll go ahead and fill out the rest. Choose the state and the zip code. County, so look through and find your county. This question, have I been here for at least 90 days prior to today? For me, the answer is yes. This is a question about whether or not you are um, a resident of Oregon. So if you are not, then you will choose the resident, the state that you are a resident of. For me, it's Oregon, so I'm going to leave this blank. Or rather, just not answer it. Um, this next question is about whether or not I want to allow other people to talk to rogue staff on my behalf or for me or to share information or receive information. Um, I don't personally want that, but you might. So let's check the box to see what happens if you do. Well, it won't allow me to check the box, and so uh, I won't do that. If I checked this, if it was allowing me to check the box, I think what would happen is there would be a pop-up, and this might happen for you if you check it, there would be a pop-up that would allow you to uh, provide the name of that person and, um, and maybe also your relationship to them. So if it's a parent or a guardian or your high school counselor or a mentor or something like that. Um, so if you have the option, if you're interested in that option and you check this box and it pops up, you'll just follow the instructions there. Otherwise, we can proceed to the next step. And now we're going to provide some information about what we're interested in studying and where we have uh, already studied in high school. And so what program or major are we planning on pursuing? And this is um, sort of, um, information related to whether we what kind of degree we want to get and a little and so there are some choices here and for me my plan is to earn an associates a transfer degree so that I can go on to a four-year college and get my Bachelor of Arts so I know that I want this Oregon transfer degree and I'm going to choose that you'll want to look through this list and find out uh, find the one that is right for you and it might mean that you are already thinking about where you would like to go what you'd like to study and where you would like to do that which university so Southern Oregon or Oregon Tech for example um, or it might mean that you are interested in a two-year or technical degree and you'll choose one of those um, or it might be that you're interested in um, or that you don't know, and so you could choose undecided. So you'll just choose the one that is right for you, and for me it's the transfer degree. What am I interested in studying? And so this is a list of all of the different things that I might be able to study at RCC, and I'm going to scroll down, and again, I'm planning on the Oregon Transfer Module, so I'm going to choose that, but I could also choose another uh, interest area. 
my educational goal. What do I want to do while I am there at RCC? And um, again, I'm planning to transfer to a four-year school, so I'm going to choose that. Um, but you may have another, uh, another choice, and you'll choose that for you. And my reason for going. So this is just why do I want to go? Again, I want to transfer to a four-year college, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that here. High school completion level. This is not necessarily what you have done now, but what you will be when you are a student at RCC. So for example, if you are currently a senior in high school, you have not yet graduated, but you are graduating and you plan to enroll at RCC after graduation, you're going to choose high school graduate. Even if you are still currently in high school, you'll choose high school graduate because the question is about what will you be when you start taking classes. High school attended. Um, so you'll choose the high school here. So you'll scroll down until you find your high school. And for me, that is here. If you don't find your high school, I think you can choose I think you might mm, you might not be able to leave it blank let's see what happens other Oregon high school if you if you don't find your Oregon high school here you can choose that all the way at the bottom um, or if it's in another state you can choose that there your high uh, what when I'm my graduating 2021 my high school GPA because it's not required but I know it so I'm going to enter it I am not currently employed, so I'm going to say that I'm not employed. And I have not served in the armed services, so I'm going to say no. Because I'm not employed, I don't have an employer. If I was, I could choose to provide that information here. Asking what country am I a citizen of? We already mentioned above that we are a US citizen, so we're just gonna go ahead and confirm that here. Asking if I'm a low income individual, um, and then there's this uh, link here. So if I don't know the answer to this question, I could click on this link and it will provide me with some information that will help me understand whether or not I am a low income individual. Um, so I can, oops, not the right one. So I can come back here and I can say yes or no. For me, the answer is yes. So I'll go ahead and choose that. You'll choose the one that's right for you. English is not my second language. I am not a permanent resident immigrant. Um, I am not a displaced homemaker, but I am a first generation college student. So this is, have either of my parents graduated from college? If the answer is no to that, then I am a first generation college student. So I'll go ahead and say yes. This list of bulleted points here are the student is the student code of responsible behavior. and. This statement says that I am required to understand and agree to these. Um, and so I want to make sure that I read these and that in fact, I do agree for them. Uh, I mean, agree with them. So I'll read through all of these. You should read through all of those. And then once you have and you agree, check the box. More things to read, make sure that you understand and then certify. When you certify your application, what that means is that everything that you have provided here is true and accurate the, to the best of your knowledge. So when, when you can say that, you click the box, and then you will click this button. When you do that, you will have applied to Rogue Community College. Congrats.